Silent Symphony, Echoes of Creation. In the heart of a city sculpted by sound, where buildings sang and silence was sculpted like clay, lived Alara, a composer whose voice had never formed a note. The streets hummed with a symphony of echoes, each structure designed to amplify a whisper or swallow a shout, crafting an auditory maze as complex as its visual splendor. Here, in this realm where sound shaped reality, Alara's muteness was an irony as profound as it was unique. Her home, a modest dwelling enveloped by the soft murmur of the resonance walls, brimmed with instruments and sheets of music that spiraled like the inside of a seashell. Notes floated through her room as she captured emotions and thoughts in her compositions, speaking in a language understood by all who heard. Despite her silence, she was known as one of the city's most eloquent storytellers, her melodies weaving tales more vivid than the spoken word could ever achieve. Alara's tranquil existence shattered the day her fingers stumbled upon the ancient chords hidden within an old, forgotten harp. These were sounds that should not have been, melodies that whispered of creation and destruction entwined. With the discovery of this catastrophic symphony, the fabric of her world began to quiver, threatening to unravel not only her city, but the very essence of existence. Unbeknownst to her, this melody was old, as old as the cosmos itself, and its discovery set forth a chain of events that could end in harmony or chaos. The symphony was a power coveted by beings both mortal and ethereal, and Alara soon found herself at the heart of a cosmic intrigue, where every note she played could either save or doom the universe. As the trio navigated through the dense thicket of the whispering woods, where every leaf quivered with ancient melodies, Mira's keen intuition for sound manipulation proved invaluable. She set up a network of resonant traps, using her intricate devices to amplify the natural discordance of the woods, turning the environment into a labyrinthine maze of misleading sonic cues. The trees hummed with a low, unsettling frequency that disoriented the pursuers, buying them precious time. Alara, observing Mira's techniques, felt a surge of hope. The very air seemed to vibrate with potential. Thorn, meanwhile, scouted ahead, his senses attuned to the slightest shift in the woodland's chorus. He had become adept at reading the subtle signs of the forest, from the rustle of the underbrush to the pattern of bird calls. His previous life as a tracker made him deeply aware of how sound could both conceal and reveal, and he was determined to use this knowledge to protect Alara from the encroaching danger. Silas, sensing the disturbances in the sonic environment from afar, grew increasingly frustrated. His mastery over sound was vast, but the chaotic nature of the whispering woods clouded his perception. He dispatched smaller groups of collectors to sweep the area, their movements creating a ghostly ballet in the foggy undergrowth. Each collector moved with deliberate silence, trained to minimize their sonic footprint, yet the woods seemed to conspire with Alara and her protectors, turning each step into a confusing echo. The night deepened, and the woods throbbed with the pulse of unseen creatures. Alara, Mira, and Thorn huddled in a hollow, surrounded by the dense tapestry of sounds. Here, Alara took a moment to reflect on the strange symphony she carried, its notes dark and powerful. She shared her fears with Mira, whose eyes sparkled with resolve. We'll use this symphony, Mira whispered fiercely, but on our terms. We'll rewrite its ending. Thor nodded, his scar a pale line in the moonlight, his commitment to their cause as solid as the earth beneath them. 
Their bond, forged in the crucible of danger, grew stronger with each passing moment. As they prepared for the next phase of their journey, the symphony within Alara's cloak seemed to resonate with their determination. Its ominous power mingled with a thread of hope. They were not just fleeing from something, they were moving towards a confrontation that might just reshape their world. As the sound storm reached its zenith, the very essence of the veil seemed to shudder, resonating with Alara's desperate bid for autonomy. Above them, the sky cracked like a giant canvas being torn apart, its colors shifting erratically as if confused by the tumult below. Silas, his figure now blurred and distorted by the vibrating air, attempted to recalibrate his aura, his hands weaving complex patterns in an effort to regain control. His efforts, however, were swallowed by the cacophonous vortex unleashed by Alara. Caius, resilient yet clearly overwhelmed, directed his energies towards containment, his form glowing brighter with each passing second. His eyes met Alara's, and for a fleeting moment, there was a silent acknowledgement of her mastery and his underestimation. Despite his centuries of experience, here at the edge of reality's fabric, he was merely a spectator to Alara's symphony. The ground beneath them, sensitive to the sonic eruptions, began to morph. Hills gently folded like waves in a slow motion ocean, and trees bent, their leaves fluttering like green flames. The ambient sounds of the veil, once mere whispers of existence, now thundered around them, a testament to Alara's command over the symphony of life. Mira's devices, strapped across her back, buzzed and whirred, each adjustment fine-tuning the storm's pitch and timber. Her role was crucial, maintaining the balance that kept them just shy of cataclysm. Beside her, Thorn moved with calculated grace, his blade cutting through pockets of turbulent air, his actions as much a dance as a fight. As the crescendo built, Silas made one last desperate grasp towards the ancient symphony's script. But the sound waves manipulated by Alara acted as a solid barrier, repelling his efforts. Defeated, his figure started to dissolve into the storm, his once formidable presence reduced to a mere echo fading into oblivion. Caius, witnessing the dissolution of his mentor, ceased his actions, his form stabilizing into clarity once more. Enough, he declared his voice carrying a weight that momentarily pierced the storm's fury. Your point is made, Alara. The storm gradually began to ebb, its intensity diminishing as Alara withdrew her control. The world around them settled, the hills resting back into their original forms, the trees righting themselves, though leaves still trembled in the aftermath. Silence fell, a thick, palpable presence as powerful in its quietude as the storm had been in its uproar. Alara, supported by Mira and Thorn, stood firm, her expression one of weary triumph. The symphony of creation, once a harbinger of chaos in the wrong hands, was now a testament to the strength found in silence and in the stillness. A new understanding was forged between those who wielded sound and those who shaped its absence. In the aftermath of the soundstorm, with the collectors dizzied and temporarily incapacitated, Alara, Mira, and Thorn found refuge in a forgotten cathedral, its architecture designed to amplify silence rather than sound. The air was thick with the metallic scent of ionized energies, remnants of the storm. Here, hidden among the pillars that swallowed sound, they pored over the ancient symphonic manuscripts Alara had salvaged. Mira, with her devices sprawled around her like scattered puzzle pieces, 
managed to isolate sequences within the symphony that suggested regeneration and growth, harmonies that could potentially reverse decay or heal. Alara, watching the visualizations flicker over Mira's screens, felt a resurgence of hope. The symphony, with its dual ability to destroy and create, mirrored the complexities of their world, where sound shaped reality. However, the weight of decision pressed heavily on Alara's shoulders. Destroying the symphony would eliminate the immediate threat it posed if it ever fell into wrong hands like those of Silas. Yet the potential to harness its power for creation was tempting, a chance to correct imbalances in their world. Thorn, ever the protector, voiced his concerns about the dangers of such power. Power, especially of this magnitude, can corrupt Delara, he cautioned, his eyes dark with the memories of past failures. We must think about containment, not just use. Alara found herself at a crossroads, her mute voice amplified by the gravity of her choice. The symphony's notes seemed to swirl around her, a silent plea for existence. As she touched the manuscript, the notes shimmered under her fingers, as if eager to be understood and respected, not feared. The silence of the cathedral stretched on, a stark canvas against which the possibilities of the symphony played out in Alara's mind. Would she obliterate it to safeguard their world, or dare to wield it to possibly reshape their reality for the better? The decision was hers alone to make, a melody of potential echoing through the quiet, waiting for her silent command. Beneath the vast expanse of the cerulean sky, the final notes of Alara's intervention resonated through the ethereal architecture of her city, a sound refined by her profound choice. She had faced the swirling maelstrom of cosmic destinies, a mute composer whose silence had once echoed as a void, now filled with the profound understanding of her role. The symphony, an ancient and omnipotent melody with threads capable of unraveling reality itself, now sang a different tune. Its once fearsome crescendos that could rend the fabric of existence were muted, their power curtailed by Alara's delicate yet firm hand. In her secluded sanctum, surrounded by the instruments of her monumental decision, Alara pondered the invisible lines connecting everything the harmonious and the discordant. She had chosen to alter, not erase, to temper, not to dominate. The symphony still existed, but in a form as gentle as the zephyr, enriching the world, fostering an unseen growth among the living and the inert alike. Her decision had reshaped the landscapes, not just of land and sea, but of thought and possibility. As Alara emerged from her sanctum, the world she stepped into was not the one she had left. Cities pulsed with softer tones, forests whispered of gentle strengths, and rivers hummed with serene persistence. Yet, questions hummed at the back of her mind like the lingering vestiges of a forgotten melody. What new realities had her alterations birthed? How would the universe respond to this new balance she imposed? And lurking within the unspoken query, had she curtailed chaos or merely postponed its resurgence? With the wind carrying the renewed symphony to the corners of the cosmos, Alara understood that control was an illusion as fleeting as silence in her sonorous world. It was not about wielding power over the elements, but dancing to their rhythms, guiding gently with a knowledgeable hand. Balance, she realized, was not a state to be achieved and maintained through force, but a series of adjustments, an eternal composition of giving and taking. To those who would come after, 
who might stumble upon the remnants of power or face their own cosmic crossroads, Alara's legacy was not merely in the harmony she crafted, but in the wisdom she embodied. True mastery, she would say if she could, lies in knowing when to lead the melody and when to let the symphony play itself. In life as in music, the beauty often lies not in the notes themselves, but in the spaces between. <laughs>